All right, we are going to continue in lesson six here um, just with some more examples of collecting rational number like terms. And these are really going to be similar to the ones you're going to see in your homework. Um, so again, don't get intimidated when you see all this. Take a step back, realize what's going on, okay? Like terms, this is a G. This is a G. Um, I'm going to put a one in front of it there, maybe. Um, this is a G and this is a four fifths. So the first thing I want to do is change things to addition. Kind of watching you guys work, um, we get confused. Is this subtracted or is this a negative? Well, if you make it um, addition, you don't have to worry about that. Okay, so let's start there. Let's take two fifths times G. Instead of saying minus one six, I'm going to say plus a negative one six. I'm going to try not to be quite so sloppy. Hmm, not going to work though. Okay. And then I'm going to say that was, a, I put that one in there. Instead of saying minus 1G, I'm going to say plus a negative 1G, plus 3 tenths G. And instead of saying minus 4 fifths, I'm going to say plus a negative 4 fifths and no G on that. Okay, so now I'm going to gather up my like terms. I have 2 fifths G's, negative 1 G's, and 3 tenths G's. So let's pull those all out um, and work on those to start okay so we can it's all addition now we can change the order <coughs> excuse me so um let's i'm gonna come over here now i'm gonna go two fifths times g plus a negative one and i'm gonna write it as negative one over one g okay and the reason i'm doing that is just so i have fractions here and then i have plus three tenths g okay so i'm gonna need a common denominator for all of these um, so five, one, and 10. Well, it seems like they all go in 10, right? So I'm going to write this out of 10. You guys, I hopefully you've noticed that I tend to, um, write it all out with our denominator. Oh, this one's already done. Um, so don't have to worry about it after, right? Okay. So what do I do to 5 to get 10 right here? I multiply 2, so I'm going to go 2 times 2, and that's 4 tenths G plus, what do I do to 1 to get 10 times it by 10? So I'm going to go negative 1 times 10 to get a negative 10. And that one stays the same, all right? Um, so that's going to work out to be 4 plus a negative 10 plus 3. Now you can do it in your head. If you struggle with positive and negative numbers, grab your calculator. And I'm going to get negative 3. So I have negative 3 G's. Okay. <clears throat> Excuse me. Now I have these two constants here, right? So I'm just going to kind of continue right that here. I'm going to have a negative 1 6 plus a negative 4 fifths. And we're going to need a common denominator for those two, right? I think 6 and 5, the smallest thing they go into is 30. All right, so what do I do to six to get 30? I times it by five. So negative one times five is a negative five. And five times six is 30. So a negative four times six is a negative 24. And again, if you struggle with um, you know negative signs, they're both a negative. I mean, go use the calculator or try to do it in your head and then check on the calculator. Since these are the same sign, they're gonna both be, you know, we add them together, that's 29. And since they're both negative, the answer is negative. Okay. And I end up with a stretched out problem here, which is my solution. Okay. So again, I want you to notice how I kind of took it in pieces. Um, I didn't try to do it all at once because I, you, if you would have tried to find a common denominator for all of them, that would have made it a lot more difficult. But I recognize what we need to add. I need to add the D, G terms and then the constant terms, and this is where it ended up, okay? Another type of problem you're going to see on your homework involves the distributive property, okay? So let's try some of these. Okay. Guys, again, the first thing I'm going to do is I am going to change everything to addition, okay? And I think if you do that, um, it's going to take away some of that anxiety of, oh, am I supposed to be subtracting? What am I supposed to be doing, okay? So I want to rewrite this. Not like that. 
um, I want to rewrite this as 2 thirds times 1 half x, instead of saying minus 6, I'm going to say plus a negative 6, okay? Now, I have to multiply everything in parentheses. 2 thirds is multiplying by 1 half x and negative 6. So then I can just go 2 thirds times 1 half x plus 2 thirds times negative 6 over 1. I'm just writing negative 6 over 1 to keep it kind of equal. Yeah, equal. Not evil. It's kind of evil. All right, so I can cross-reduce. 3 and 1 have a common factor of 1, which doesn't help me. But 2 and 2 have a common factor of 2. 2 goes into itself one time. 2 goes into itself one time. I'm left with 1 times 1, which is 1, and 3 times 1, which is 3, times x. Don't forget your x. Plus, over here, 2 and 1 have a common factor of 1. 3 and 6, though, have a common factor of 3. So 3 goes into itself one time. 3 or goes into negative 6 here. I'm going to say a negative 2 times. So 2 times the negative 2 is negative 4, and just 1 times 1 on the bottom. Okay, so if you did put that 1 over there, you don't have to. You can just write this as 1 third x plus negative 4. You could say minus 4. Um, but you actually have to make sure you do both multiplications. Like you can't just multiply this first thing, you have to do them both. And the more you write down, the easier it gets, okay? One more example. All right, so I don't know what I'm doing there, I apologize. All right, so the last one here says, um, oh, as with everything, I'm changing all of this minus here to adding. So I'm going to say 1 fourth times 8x, instead of saying minus 16, I'm going to say plus a negative 16. Subtracting the same thing as adding the opposite. And then instead of saying minus 2x right here, I'm going to keep this, change the minus to a plus, change 2x to its opposite, negative 2x. Don't add anything together until you get the multiplying done. So I'm going to multiply 1 fourth times 8x. So I'm going to write 8 over 1x. Then plus sign, plus sign. If you change everything to addition, you have to worry about what sign to put. That's another reason I like it. I'm going to go 1 fourth times negative 16 over 1. And then don't multiply this 1 fourth by this over here. This is 1 fourth times what's in parentheses here. That's outside of the parentheses, outside of the first set of parentheses. So I'm just going to carry it along. Okay? Now just keep going step by step. Guys, honestly, I know we don't like to write things down, but it's so much easier if you do. This ends up being... 4 goes into itself one time, 4 goes into 8 two times, 1 times 2 over 1 times 1, well that's just 2, don't forget your x, plus over here, if I cross reduce, 4 goes into itself one time, 4 goes into a negative 16, a negative 4 times, that's plus a negative 4, plus my negative 2x. Well now let's look at our like terms here, right? If I have 2x's and a negative 2x's, guess what that equals? 0. So I have 0 plus my negative 4, and guess what? That means our solution is just negative 4, okay? All right, so um, the big thing coming out of this lesson is we're just dealing with fractions. We're dealing with fractions, but we have dealt with fractions in the past, so do you just have to bring back maybe that stuff we hoped disappeared, but it didn't. Um, but we need to know how to add, subtract, multiply, and divide fractions. Um, and also, we need to be um, really good with using our distributive property, remembering that we're multiplying everything in parentheses by the number outside the parentheses. Other than that, the rules for simplifying or gathering like terms are the same as if these were integers.